Spring means snakes are coming out of their winter hibernation. Yes, here in Connecticut. And while the majority are harmless, there are some venomous ones out there, as a local dog just learned. For some info, we turn to herpetologist Sarah Horwitz. And Sarah Horwitz, thank you so much for being with us here today. Thank you for having me. And who's this guy here? This is Onyx, and he is an eastern rat snake. And so this, this snake is indigenous to Connecticut, and you might see one in your yard. Yes, you might. They, and you they, shouldn't freak out. No, uh, you don't need to freak out. Um, they do sometimes like to make their way into people's houses, but usually they're hanging out in meadows, um, big open fields, or up in the trees. It's weird how they constrict one way and go the other. Yes. <laughs> so uh, this one is pretty long, right? Yes, this is a, the second longest snake in the United States, and they get to be over six feet long. Someone posted one of these in their yard in Bloomfield the other day. Yep. And they were kind of freaked out. This was, they say it was only four to five feet long, but mm -hmm. let's, does he like to be stretched out or no? Oh, he doesn't mind as long as you're nice okay and so gentle. this yeah. one's about six feet long is it yeah, right yeah we can we can wow, see six feet long <laughs> can he hurt you i mean they, they can bite so i wouldn't suggest if you see a wild snake to pick it up but just give some distance social distance between you and the snake and uh they'll, they'll go on their way and what's the benefit of a snake like this to the uh, environment? lots of benefits they you know help support the the ecosystem and they're Really, um, one of their biggest benefits is that they will eat a lot of the rodents that you don't want getting into your house that carry all sorts of diseases. Okay, we're going to bring in our other snake handler, Felipe Guajardo, who's going to swap snakes because these two snakes really can't be together, correct? <laughs> yeah, we, so, we'll, we'll keep them uh, separate. So we have a thank you, stern Felipe. milk snake, a now little this, bit smaller. This snake here is also very common to Connecticut, correct? Yes, these ones are spread throughout um, Connecticut, and sometimes uh, people do come across these snakes in hikes or um, around their house. It looks like it might be poisonous. But it's not. No, so a lot of people do confuse this snake with one of our venomous snakes, the eastern copperhead. But this one is not venomous. It doesn't have that triangular shaped head. You could find one in your house as well. You could. It doesn't or happen your yard. often, but you can usually you can find them along rock walls, and sometimes they do get in through basements. They're pretty small, so they'll get in through like a little hole, and they'll uh, make a, a way in for a place to hide out. Good to know. <laughs> All right, and we do have poisonous snakes, venomous snakes in Connecticut. You brought this here. This is from a rattlesnake, correct? Exactly. Yes, it's from a timber rattlesnake. So we have timber rattlesnakes, and we have northern copperheads in Connecticut. These are spotted in Glastonbury from time to time. Why Glastonbury? Well, a lot of the areas where they used to live, um, they were hunted and people don't want them in their yards. So uh, Glastonbury is one of the last remaining populations as well as some of the northwestern areas of Connecticut. And we had a copperhead that bit a dog in Hamden last week, yes. a sleeping giant. Yes. And I know a few years ago there was one that bit a dog in West Hartford the, the, at the reservoir. So copperheads are, are more prevalent than rattlesnakes? Yeah, so they're more spread out through the state and people do come across them a little bit more, especially when they're walking around the reservoir or around different air, uh, you know, lakes and ponds, they might see them. And, and so what kind of damage can a rattlesnake or a copperhead do? How, how well, I guess how powerful is that venom? Yeah, so they have a, a so their venom is, you know, fairly strong. Um, it's, it's, it's considered a medical emergency. You do want to get to the hospital. Um, you'll start to get a lot of swelling and bruising. Um, so usually we just say, take off any rings. If it's a dog, take off the, the leash, the collar, so that you can, so the swelling doesn't impact them too much and get them to a hospital so they can have their anti-venom. So call 911 right away, right? Yeah, you want to call 911. I call you, but, yeah. but most people will call. <laughs> call 911 first. Um, yeah, and, no, and if you can and it's safe, take a photo so you can let them know you're coming in and they can have the anti-venom ready. It's, it's rather uncommon though to come across a copperhead or a rattlesnake, correct? I'd say most people in their life um, in Connecticut are not going to come across the rattlesnake. A few people do come across copperheads if they're in their habitat, but usually it's just crossing a path or on the side. Can a copperhead show up in your yard? I have gotten calls from them showing up in people's yards. Um, usually what happens is they get stuck in somebody's fencing um, around their vegetables or flowers, and sometimes we have to go and help them get them out of their yard and, and rescue them. which times do you see these snakes? I've seen them in Simsbury, Hamden. Um, they, they're more spread out throughout like the southern re regions and <laughs> in the central Connecticut. If people want to see these snakes, where should they go? So I highly recommend checking out Riverside Reptiles. It's located in Enfield, and you can see these snakes, plus rattlesnakes, copperheads, and they also have cobras and anacondas. Great place to go this summer. Thankfully, you didn't bring an anaconda with you today. We appreciate that. Next time. That. <laughs> well, Sarah Horwitz, we always enjoy these conversations. Thank you so much for educating our viewers today. Yes, of course. Um, Hopefully, we won't see one of these in real life. Well, yes. But if you do, don't freak out, right? Yeah. 
except when they climb your trees, right? But when we come back, a look at the Travelers Championship and what the name really means.